Good morning, everyone. School Journal of Education and SchoolReformer.com welcomes today's speaker, Mr. Manan Ishwari. The, today's topic is how to identify talent and nurture it. The duration of the topic is around 20 minutes. During or after the talk, please post your questions in the QA box, which you will see below the video screen. Mr. Speaker, you can start your talk now, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for welcoming me. Uh, good morning, viewers. Today, I will be taking you through to how to identify your talent and nurture it. This has been one of the most important aspects to all the educators because being an educator, we should be able to identify the talent, the hidden talent in every child and expose them to the multiple avenues that they have with that particular talent. So today the agenda would be like uh, what talent is and how we should identify. And I would also be talking about how to nurture those talent. And last uh, agenda would be like Q&A, wherein I will be answering your questions. Uh, before I actually start the presentation, I would like to show you a small video. The farmer one day found an eaglet's egg and he picked it up and, and took it over to the hen house and put it under one of his hens. And when all the eggs were hatched, the little eagle was hatched with all the other little chickens. And of course, immediately the mother hen begins to rear her chicks as she often does. And the little eagle was treated exactly the same. And as he continued to grow, he assumed he was just a part of the family with another chicken among chickens. And so he began to learn the things that all little chickens learned. To go around the barnyard, peck for worms, and, and then when it came to flying, learned to fly maybe a few feet. First, that was very awkward, and then he got pretty good at flying only a few feet at a time. And this is the way he continued to live, just following the, the role of all the other chickens. And then one day, when he was much older, he looked up at the sky and he saw a beautiful, majestic bird riding on the, on the wings. He turned to one of his friends and he said, who is that? What is that? His friend said, oh, he said, that's, that's an eagle. They're birds of the sky. He said, we're chickens. And we're birds of the ground. After the old eagle heard his friend tell him that that was a bird in the sky and he was a bird in the ground, there was a part of him that had been caught in that moment of seeing that bird in the sky that ignited a longing for himself. To fly a few feet, to eat worms, the worms had never satisfied his hunger, and the flying never seemed to be enough. He suddenly realized that he was facing a decision in his life. And that decision really was, do I continue to go on with life as I've always lived it, or do I do whatever it takes to fly like that bird? So he began to ponder that and he made a decision. He'd rather try to fly like that bird than to simply accept the way he's been living. And so that's the decision he made, to fly. Life has changed. Now, uh, what we understood from this video is that the eagle, which was among the chicken, he was unaware of his hidden talent, that is, to fly. Time and again, the eagle was trying to fly and was demotivated by his friends. And later on, he did not give up. So that innate talent which was inborn in the eagle 
was very much there. What if the eagle would not have identified that talent which was inherent in him to fly? The story would have been different. So let us now uh, discuss on what actually talent is. So talent, what I mean is that it's a natural aptitude or skill in a specific area. Each and every child is born with a talent. No one is born without a talent. So it is this specific area wherein we educators have to facilitate to know that particular talent and expose the child and create a roadmap for the child to reach to the goal. Many students, they feel that they are good in, uh, not good in studies. Actually, no one is uh, born to be Einstein and no one is born to be a cricketer, footballer, just like that. There is a specific inherent talent in the child if the boy or a girl is not good in studies, that we should not discourage the child. There must be something hidden in that child which the child is good at. So being an educator, we have to find out that talent and expose that child. So manifestation of talent, the child may be good at creativity, the child may be good at dance, acting, music, problem solving, public speaking, leadership, communication, painting, sports, and there are lots of talent which we can find in a child. So we have to help that particular child to find out. So being an educator, we are not actually the educator, but just a facilitator, which we facilitate between the child and the talent that the child already has. Now the question comes, how to identify those talents? The first thing that we have to do is understand the individual. Day in and day out, the child is with us in the school. The larger chunk of the time the child spends his life in the school. So we being the facilitator and educator, we have to understand each and every aspect of the child. So if we can understand the child by observing their behavior, their interests and preferences and things, then we can easily find out what the child is good at. As I told you, every child is born with a unique talent. And that unique strength has to be figured out in the child. The success then becomes very readily available to that child. Now, when that talent has been identified, when that talent has been found out in the child, we have to give constant feedback. We have to create an assessment patterns to test the child, whether the child is really interested in that field. Not everyone is good at studies. The child may not be so much interested in studies if the child is more interested in games and sports. That is why we see that NEP 2020 has elaborately described how co-curricular activities have become part of the education. So constant feedback and assessment has to be done. And also we have to create the consistency and enthusiasm in the child. If that consistency is there in the child, then definitely the child will uh, be interested in doing what he or she is doing. It's not that for one point of time, I am interested in something, but in the later point of time, I am not at all interested in that uh, field. So if we can take care of all these aspects, then I think we are good at identifying the talent in the child and we will definitely guide that child to reach the pinnacle of success based on the interest of the child.
So it is also always important for a child to do what he or she loves, not that someone has told the child to take up uh, engineering or medical and the child later on is not interested and heartbroken and not want to continue that particular field. So in that kind of a scenario, the child will not be successful in what he or she does. So it is very, very important for the child to take into consideration his interest and what gives joy to that child by doing so. So now the question comes, how to nurture talent? Now the talent has been found out. We have found out that this boy or a girl is interested, really interested in doing something. Now how we can nurture that talent and not allow to die? So here are some of the points which I would like to tell you that being educator and facilitator, we have to provide opportunities to the students. If we can provide opportunities through various activities, various courses, various trainings, then we will be more adept in figuring out what the student really is good at. There are schools which has 3,000 and 4,000 students, wherein the child never gets opportunity to participate in certain activities. So we have to force them to uh, participate in the activities. First, we have to do that. Because always the best one gets the opportunity and those who are not so good, they are not given opportunity. So I really urge the institutions and the educators to please take note of all these uh, mediocre students, those who may not be good at studies, to provide opportunities to them too. Because without opportunity, we will not be able to expose them to the diverse talents that they may have. And we will not be able to find out what they are good at and they will be unsuccessful throughout their life. So the second one is uh, we have to give challenging assignments to those students because if someone is good at something, we have the habit of creating a comfort zone and we never want to get out of that comfort zone. So the child has to be challenged with diverse assignments, diverse tasks to uh, push the limits. Until and unless we push our limits, we don't know what we are capable of. So the educators and the facilitators will have to constantly give challenging assignments to know their limits and to know their strengths. Next is tailored training and skill development. So some of the schools, they have uh, Olympiad sections, some of the schools, they have sports section, and some of the schools, they have many hobby clubs, which gives ample opportunities for them to find out which student is good at what. So later on, after finding out that a specific student is good in uh, studies, then probably we can tailor a special kind of a training or a curriculum or a assignment for that particular child to develop that skill. Because it is very, very important to develop the skill that we have. Otherwise, we may feel that we are good at it, but once we come out of a comfort zone and compete with the higher level uh, competitors, then we may uh, meet with failures. So in order to prepare the child for the better challenges and uh, future hurdles, we have to tailor uh, training and develop the skills they have. Because in the school levels, they may have a raw talent and that raw talent has to be uh, very nicely framed and very nicely trained and then they can be one of the best okay, successful person in that particular field. Next is uh, creating a culture of recognition. When a student has to go a long way, the student has to be appreciated and recognized 
all throughout the journey of success. If we don't create the a culture of recognition, there would be time when the student would be demoralized, demotivated, and that would kill the talent that is there in the child. Next, uh, tracking progress and development. So constantly we have to track the progress of that child. It is not only that we should identify the talent and stop then and there, but we have to track their uh, developments, how good they are, where they are, and what they can do in that field. So con constantly they will be challenged with different kinds of uh, hurdles and there has to be measurable goals to reach. There should be short term goals, there should be long term goals, and in the midst, they have to be constantly motivated because children are always uh, wayward if they are not under the control of the mentors. So mentor and the educators, facilitators, they play a vital role in the life of the students. So we can also uh, provide uh, stories or a case studies of a success stories of different individuals. Mr. Manan, are you there? We are not able to hear you, sir. Mr. Manan Ishwari, are you there? Mr. Manan, are you there? We lost you. Yes, yes. There is a short uh, disruption of electricity. No issue, sir. Please continue. Yes. Am I visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. No, uh, you need to turn on your light. You're not visible properly. I think uh, electricity went off now. No issues then. Uh, you can switch off your camera and present the screen then. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Okay. So I was talking about how we can nurture the talent of the students. So case studies, I already mentioned that the success story of certain individuals can motivate the students to reach the pinnacle of success because they take uh, this person as a role model and they can definitely reach to the pinnacle of success following the footsteps. And next is embracing challenges and failures. So we have to teach our students that it is not always success that we will test because in our pursuit of our goals, we also will face at certain times failures. So when we meet with failures, we should not be demoralized and we should not give up. So this is what we have to tell our students. Many students are very happy and they can handle the success. 
but not everyone can handle three years. So first and foremost, we will have to uh, train them and motivate them to face the failures as well. Uh, last but not the least, we have uh, some experimentations, encouragement should be there. We have to encourage the students to experiment with their talents. Sometimes what happens if our talents are not refined, if we don't experiment on certain things, we only end up being good in a particular level. When we go to the next level, we always find it difficult to survive. So creating an environment wherein we provide ample opportunities for the students to experiment and we should also tell them and motivate them that that is not the end of it. They can uh, achieve success, they can achieve failures, but they have to stay motivated that continuous perseverance and hard work has to be there. Because once we have found out the talent, we have to constantly guide them. Otherwise, the talent which was inborn in the child will go with them to the grave. So I think uh, this is what we understand by the talent and how we have to identify talent and how we can nurture them. So now I open the floor for Q&A. Yes, sir. Thank you. So can you turn on your camera, please? Uh, can you stop sharing your screen? Just a second. You're still not visible, sir. Is there any um, light you can turn it on? We're not able to see, to see you on the screen. Is it okay now, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's better. So uh, we have a couple of questions lined up, and most of uh, the points are already covered by you, Mr. Munin. But I would like to uh, read out all those questions to you, which are posted by the audience. So the first question goes like this. Uh, in your opinion, what are the key characteristics or qualities that define talent in individuals? You have already spoken about the characteristics, but can you please elaborate on them? Thank you. Um, Come again, ma'am. What are the characteristics of? Yes. In your opinion, what are the key characteristics or qualities that define talent in individuals? Okay. So, uh, the characteristics that we can identify from the child is through observation. We have to observe initially to find out what the student is interested in. As I told you, not everyone would be really good at studies, but some would be good in sports, some would be good in drawing, some would be good in public speaking. So all these aspects we have to identify. And it depends on how we expose our students in our school. Because we give them opportunities and we find out whether they are good in that or not. So until and unless we find out that particular uh, gold in the child, we need to keep on exposing the child to various activities like this. I hope I answered it. Right, sir. So talking about the educators, uh, you know, when it comes to institutions, how can institutions effectively identify talent within their workforce or during the recruitment process? Okay. So uh, it depends on the institution's uh, needs. Suppose I am wanting uh, IIT-based 
teacher. So I would be um, drawing out all my interview criteria likewise. Suppose uh, I come from English background. So in English, it is not only about the marks or it is not only about your uh, writing and reading, but also speaking, which is very, very important. So in my interview, I would be asking questions like how the interviewee would be teaching English given a chance to teach the students. So I would be asking about like, what is his or her understanding about uh, literary devices? What are the elements of the story? What are the elements of poetry? So this basically are not gradually uh, becoming very, very stagnant in the field of teaching and learning. But we have to find out from the interviewees what their real intention is. So I don't think that skill issue is the biggest issue here. Will issue has become the biggest problem in the industry right now. When uh, teachers are not ready to learn because Learning is a continuous process. I may say that I have completed my master's, but my learning hasn't stopped there. I get to learn every day from the students as well. So that is how willingness to learn would become one of the criteria to hire a workforce. Right, sir. So coming back to the student's talent, uh, in general also we can think about it. Once talent is identified, what are some effective strategies for nurturing and developing that talent, sir? Yes, as I told you, uh, once the talent has been identified, constantly we have to mentor the child. I can give example of my own student. There was one student in my school uh, in one of the uh, house competitions. Uh, he was not able to uh, participate because he was not given chance and he got demoralized and then he never wanted to participate. So what I told him is that somehow I will give you the opportunity. I will do what I can from my end to provide you the opportunity, but you have to give the best you can. And that child took part in the singing competition and he did really well. And from there on, he went to become a very good singer. So that is how we can nurture the talent. I am not expert in singing, but I can help the child to tag along with one music teacher of the uh, institution, right? If a child is good in sports, then I can uh, ask my PE teachers to take special care of that particular child in a specific sport. So likewise, we can nurture the talent that we have because we are in a profession where we touch and transform lives. So even if I'm not directly connected to the child, I can definitely touch and transform his life by giving him the right mentorship and right direction to meet the person and enhance his talent. Right, sir. So are there any specific tools or assessment methods you recommend for identify talent in individuals, be it educators or students? Uh, come again, ma'am. Are there any specific tools or assessment methods you recommend for identifying talent in individuals? I'm asking if it can be students or educators, adults also. Okay. So I think, yes, uh, we can design a kind of a parameters to assess the students. Because uh, if I take example of uh, education itself, Many students, they study only before exam. So they wait for the exam so that they get the feeling that yes, we need to study now. And in the last minute, they have the habit of studying. So if in my school, I introduce open book test. So the test, suppose we have four or five uh, assessments in the entire year. If one of the assessments, if I make it uh, open book, exam so that particular exam 
will give them exposure to at least turn the pages of the books and find out. By looking at the question itself, they will try to find out. In the process of finding out the answer, the child would be coming across so many other different things, unwantedly learning those things, if not intentionally. So similarly, there are certain criteria for certain fields. If a child is good in music, so yes, there is an assessment criteria for the staff notation, uh, vocals, and the notes of the music, with which we can assess the improvement or development of the child. So wherever there are not much of a scope of assessment, I think we as an educator should come in there and create our own assessments to give that particular uh, goal setting to the child. Right, sir. So how important is mentorship and coaching in nurturing talent? What role do they play in development process? Yes, I, as I have already uh, discussed, that mentorship is of prime importance. We as mentors, as I told you that we are just facilitators. Each and every child is born with a talent. That particular talent has to be identified by the facilitators and the educators. If the educator is able to do that, that child will be reaching to the goal or becoming successful sooner than others. Because what I have seen is that there are many students, by the time they pass out from the school, plus two, they even don't know what they are good at and what they want to do in life. So being the mentors, we have to give them this particular field that what they are good at. If we can tell them that, yes, you are good at this, I think if you pursue this career, it would be better for you. So in consultation with the parents also, the mentors can uh, do this. Because most of the students and parents, they trust the mentors or the facilitators or the educators. So we being very closely associated with the students day in and day out, we know better than the parents what the student is good at. So if we genuinely give suggestions, I hope the parents will listen and the child will not be thrown into the area where the child is not really interested to pursue. Right, sir. So as uh, a mentor, did you mentor anybody? And can you share any success stories or examples of how talent identification and nurturing programs have had a significant impact on individuals or organizations? Did you mentor anybody? And can you share any success story or in any method of talent identification, sir? Yes, uh, I will just tell you one small incident uh, in my school uh, where there was one girl who was constantly being nagged by the parents and was always demoralized and always compared to other students. She was not so good in studies. She was a mediocre. But she was constantly compared with others which did not go down well with her and she went into depression. And coincidentally, she loved English as a subject and she used to come and talk to me and she told that she used to write everything she used to feel in the diary. So what I told her is that, okay, so this is a very good uh, activity that you are doing. You are talking to the diary you pour your heart out in the diary. Every day you write and express your feelings and thoughts, emotions to the diary. And then you can, uh, one day, you can compile the entire diary and publish it. So, in fact, this girl, by the time she passed out class 12 from the school, she sent me one copy of her book, wherein she has published actually whatever she felt. So she is one of the budding writers currently. So this is how one small uh, motivation or a mentorship can change the life of a student because 
the students would blindly trust the teacher whom they liked. And that is how we can touch and transform their lives. Right, sir. That's a very pleasant experience to uh, have in your uh, career, as you, as I would say. So, uh, talk. We, we spoke about the success stories, but what are the challenges, sir? What are some common challenges or obstacles uh, the educators or the mentors face when it comes to identify um, talent or nurturing? How can they overcome? How can you overcome those challenges? Okay. So one of the biggest challenge challenges like uh, apart from the studies, parents are not wanting their child to be in other fields. So very rarely there are parents who willingly tell that my child is good in sports, so I want to make him a sports person. No. So constantly there would be a degrading of the grades of the child. And we know as a school, as a mentor, as an educator, that that child is really good in sports. Perhaps that child would be better off in the sports field than in the academics. So that is how mentors always fail uh, deject, uh, dejecting parents and not wanting uh, to support the child in the interest of the child where the possibility of doing well is there. So that is one uh, obstacle. And the other obstacles would be like uh, some uh, teachers, they don't really feel like to spend much time with the students. So if you are with the students, we have to touch and feel the pearls of the students. So we need special efforts to do that. It is not only that going to class, teaching and coming back uh, will transform the life of a student. Anyways, the students would be reading the books, write the exam and pass. But what additional value are we giving to the students being an educator or a mentor? So this is where we have to emotionally connect with the students, understand even if they don't speak to us about their feelings and emotions. And once we can build a rapport, then they will open up. And then when they open up, we come to know what they are interested in, what they are capable of, and where they can go with that talents. So these are some of the obstacles that we find. But there are many success stories wherein teachers have touched and transformed the life of the students. And that student will forever be inducted to that educator. Yes, sir. So when you see the positive results, you can uh, you are prepared to overcome any obstacles or challenges. Very well spoken, sir. School Journal of Education and SchoolReformer.com. Thank you for the talk and for positively and patiently answering all the questions, sir. We also thank the audience for participating in the event. We will end the session now, sir. Thank you. Anything you would like to say? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. But unfortunately, electricity has went off and there was a disruption. No issue, sir. Thanks. We associated with you in the future. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too, sir. Thank you. I'm going to end the session now. Thank you.